Oklahoma football has had elite quarterback play for quite some time. After Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray won the Heisman Trophy, Jalen Hurts was insane in his one year there, and most recently, you've had Caleb Williams and Spencer Rattler. Right now, they sort of have a placeholder quarterback in Dylan Gabriel, but the future looks extremely bright in Norman. The Sooners have recently signed one of the top quarterbacks in the class of 2023, and he is a future star for them. He's one of the best quarterbacks in Texas high school football history, could be a generational passer, and has all the tools to get Oklahoma back to the top of producing quarterbacks. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the rise of Jackson Arnold, go through how this guy turned from a three-star player to a top five recruit, and talk about his impact on Oklahoma. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe if you love college football content, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now, let's get started and talk about Jackson Arnold. In order to understand how Jackson Arnold got to this point, we first need to go back in time. His story starts in North Gwinnett, Georgia, as he played football there as a six-year-old and remembers loving one thing about being a quarterback. He said, quote, it was just being in control of everything. Back then, I didn't realize the whole scope of it and how much I could actually control, but just having the ball in my hands every offensive play is something I remember from the very start. A few years later, Arnold would wow the crowds as he threw a 35-yard pass that would stun the adults in the audience, and many knew that Arnold was going to be big time someday. Football ran in his family as his father Todd was a running back at Woford, and by the age of three, Arnold had already tried to play golf, baseball, and football. Growing up in Georgia, he idolized Georgia quarterbacks such as Matthew Stafford, Aaron Murray, and Jake Fromm. He'd end up moving to Texas and eventually settled on Denton Geyer High School, which produced former big-time quarterbacks J.W. Walsh, Sean Robinson, and Gerard Hart. Before his junior year of high school, Arnold was ready to get going with his recruiting. He said, quote, I knew barely anything about recruiting before it started, so it's all new to me. I'm planning to go to some places, Oklahoma State, TCU, Arkansas, SMU, and Texas. Despite being a dual-sport athlete, he saw quarterback as his primary sport and his focus for the next level. In his sophomore year, he was behind quarterback Eli Stowers, who eventually signed with Texas A&M and threw for 140 yards and had two total touchdowns. But this was not his first time playing for Denton. A year prior, he was thrown into the state championship game as Stowers went down with an injury. Suddenly, Arnold was put on Texas's biggest stage, and while only weighing 170 pounds, it was now all on his shoulders. Unfortunately, Arnold would get hit over and over and over as his team never found the end zone, and Austin Westlake cruised to a 24-0 victory. His coach said, quote, he was not at all ready to play, he just got thrown to the wolves. But I remember vividly watching that kid compete, completely overwhelmed from a physical standpoint, but the grit he showed in that game was insane. He did not back down, and they were rattling his cage, and he never once gave up the fight. Afterwards, he was covered in scrapes, turf burns, and bruises as he walked through the front door of his family house in tears, and he would bury his head in his mother's neck. It was a rude introduction to Texas high school football, but his mom says, quote, that night a little boy grew up, and he grew into a man that night. This was the first time the world was introduced to Arnold, but he would soon take the world by storm. With a starting job in his hands as a junior in 2021, He'd throw for just under 4,000 yards, 34 touchdowns, and he completed 67% of his passes. He had taken off, and his high school coach said, quote, Jackson Arnold may have been the greatest backup in the history of Texas high school football his sophomore year. After that season, offers would fly in, and the first big-time school to really start pursuing Arnold was Arkansas. Offensive coordinator Kendall Bryle saw him as the future of the Razorbacks program, and from then on, Arnold only rose in the eyes of scouts. In one year, he went from a backup to a three-star recruit, and then eventually a four-star recruit. It was absolutely insane to him. He said, quote, It's really awesome. It's pretty exciting to see all of my hard work pay off, and a childhood dream of mine has come true. I'm thankful for the experience that I have. Not only was he a football star, but he was also considered a baseball star. He did end up choosing football, though, and took the recruiting world very seriously, and had a few big schools in mind. He visited Notre Dame, Oklahoma, TCU, and Ole Miss, but with the Sooners having five-star quarterback Malachi Nelson committed, he probably wasn't going to go there. His senior year, though, was historical. He was named the Max Preps Player of the Year in Texas, as he threw for 4,400 yards, 57 touchdowns, completed 68.7% of his passes, and only had three interceptions. Those numbers alone would have been absolutely mind-boggling, but he also had nearly 1,000 yards and 24 touchdowns on the ground. 
Truly, Jackson Arnold was a superstar. Those are video game-like numbers, and he also won a lot of games and brought a lot of success to Denton Geyer High School. He led them to an undefeated regular season, finishing the year 14-1 after losing in the 6A semifinal. The pressure of playing 6A football in Texas was tough. As he said, it can get a little bit heavy at times with the rankings and offers and all of that stuff. I try not to let it affect me, but it can weigh me down a little bit. He ended up winning top national player of the year and was the Elite 11 winner, beating out Malachi Nelson and Arch Manning. But where was he going to go? Well, he had actually made up his mind over a year ago. For a while, Notre Dame was in the mix, but ultimately it was Oklahoma for multiple reasons and the coaches were a big factor. He said, quote, Levy was one of my first offers, so I've been high on him since he was at Ole Miss. I've kept a good connection with him, I talk to him almost every week, and we just have a great relationship. Once he went to Oklahoma, which is only two and a half hours away, I knew it was the place to be. The system would also be perfect for him. Arnold said his offense is pretty much what they run in his high school, as its fast tempo has wide splits and RPOs. He also fell in love with Coach Venables, the quarterback tradition, the proximity to home, and his good wide receiver friend Ashton Cozart was also committed to Oklahoma, but did since flip to Oregon. It also helped that Malachi Nelson flipped to USC after Riley left for Oklahoma, so now it would be Arnold's spot in the 2023 class. Despite a disappointing season for Oklahoma in 2022, Arnold decided to stay the course and enrolled early at Oklahoma. In total, he was 28-3 as a starter, threw for 7,497 yards, and had 67 touchdowns, compared to only 8 interceptions. Absolutely insane. Since his meteoric rise, he has since been named a 5-star recruit, as according to 24-7 Sports, he was a 5-star, the number 4 quarterback, and the 8th best player in the class of 2023, with some sites listing him as a top 5 player. So, what does this mean for Oklahoma? When you take a look at Oklahoma's 2023 quarterback room, it's definitely interesting. The only quarterbacks who have arrived in Norman that were actually more highly touted than Arnold were Caleb Williams and Rhett Bomar. One of those ended up winning the Heisman, whereas Bomar never ended up living up to the height. Arnold was also ranked higher than Rattler coming out of high school, so he's a big deal. So far, he has enrolled early and has started playing spring ball, and he has huge goals for himself. He said, quote, Hopefully, I have a lot of wins, a national championship, a Heisman maybe, but more so, a national championship would be ideal. Right there, it says it all. He'd rather win a national championship than the Heisman, meaning he probably prefers the team winning over him having insane stats. I'm sure, though, he could have both. There are plenty of five-star recruits, and Oklahoma has signed plenty of big quarterbacks, but what makes Arnold different from those other guys? His coach said, quote, his arm strength, release, field vision, and athleticism. He has feet that rushed for more than 500 yards during the state playoffs this fall, has the ability to extend plays, and has a knack for lifting up his teammates. What does Arnold expect for next year? Well, he said if his number gets called, he's going to be ready to play. He said he's excited to learn under Dylan Gabriel. In my opinion, Arnold will end up being the backup quarterback next year, but if Gabriel struggles, I could see them putting in the freshman. Last year, Dylan Gabriel was alright, but I don't think he was the elite quarterback that Oklahoma fans were expecting him to be and after a 6-7 season last year, their patience is going to be low, and Jeff Levy's going to put the guy out there who gives them the best chance to win. Maybe Arnold doesn't play, maybe he plays in four games, or maybe he ends up starting. Either way, he's the next great Sooner quarterback, was a Texas high school football legend, and is a generational talent. But, what do you think of this year's quarterback battle? What are your thoughts on Jackson Arnold? And what player, topic, team, or situation should I cover next? Be sure to let me know down below, Leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.